Capito, which is Joe Glines from the Automator, and I'm in Vegas visiting my dad this week. Um, I do work in some and then kind of visit my dad too, but I want to cover what we automated this last week in AutoHotKey. Um, the guys have been pretty busy, it looks like, so let me launch the script. Now, when I got here, I downloaded Dropbox, which synced all of our files on my local, my dad's computer here. It's still quite a bit slower than my computer, but it should be fine for this video, I think. Um, and I see we have 94 files. And let me see if I have my script running that bumps up the DPI. Not that it would matter, but there it goes. So, um, yeah, this script's pretty cool. And we'll start off here, converted to V2. So we, we're working on a file explorer, which is going to be kind of similar to this in the concept, because we're going to be able to navigate files using AutoHotKey to display the files and folders. And then for... If you've defined like the type of file for a given extension, we'll use a sensitive control like we're doing here to display the content of the file, which I think is going to be pretty cool. So if you have like HTML or JSON or Python or whatever you want, and we're going to actually allow you to enter your own. Um, I have a roughly 80 or so from the site tool that we used. But um, if you want to make up your own, you can put your own keywords and it will add the colors for it. So it'll be very flexible. So... That's what um, we're working on with those. I'm not actually sure what the um, Excel event, maybe that was just a test we were doing during the hero call. And File Explorer, so we're still in File Explorer, File Explorer Lib. Um, this WebSocket, this is actually, if I click on it, I think I get an error because it's trying to use this library and call itself. Yeah, it's, 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 it's in use, it can't, it'll, let's see if it does it here, which one, this one, yeah. So access is denied. So I'm just gonna hit continue, not worry about that. Um, simple. Oh, I think I was working. I was testing, which one is it from? Um, Google's Gemini supposedly had made a leap forward, but um, I couldn't use the newest model. So I don't know if it's sucked because I couldn't use the newest model or what, but the it still was terrible at using V2, auto hotkey V2. So right now, Claude is the only one we're aware of that does a good, decent job at supplying V2 code. So um, anyway, that's what I was doing, I think, with that. Completion example. Um, now, we have an OpenAI class for interacting with ChatGPT, and for several clients and for us, we're using it in different ways. And this this is the um, one of the things we do is you can select code and hit a hotkey and say, "Hey, you know, update this code for me," and it will take what was selected, submit it to ChatGPT with your with what you say when you hold down um, the button to record your statement, and it uses the whisper command. Now, what we haven't done in this one is we're going to use Whisper from ChatGPT because that does the voice transcription, but then we're going to send the query over to Claude because it's better at, at V2. So um, that's one of the things we're doing with those, but it's, it's pretty awesome. Let's see here, a lot of open AI, just working on the library because our clients have one, another one wanted to use the OCR um, in it. And so we're, as Ace right now is working on that. And the other one we just, did we've started on we haven't finished it is to tag a bunch of images so we're submitting the image to ChatGPT and having ChatGPT tell us what it sees and provide both the category and tags for it and then what we're going to build probably it depends on the client wants to do it or not is to have a second thing go and check and say hey in this image do you see these things right to kind of confirm the, what it found so that's one that we're um working on for one of our clients in addition to the um, OCR and again we have other things we plan to do with it as well like maybe go through our our resource finder and tag automatically tag all those icons that we had especially since with Windows 11 and Windows 10 it's different so um, we might figure that out and let's see here open a Chrome inspector oh oh another one um, trying to oh this WebSocket. Anything to do with this WebSocket, I think it's trying to use it. I'm not sure what I assume Irfan was doing something there. And this create drive we updated. It's a great one. You create a fake drive like this S drive, which is that's how we're using Dropbox is we create the S drive in and right here, that's this is the full path to it on my dad's hard drive. However, if I go to the S drive, you'll see these things didn't change. And this is how 
Isaias and Irfian and Rizwan all have the same path to all the files, and it really helps us keep organized. So I'll try to remember to get that link up here where you can grab that. It, it makes it very easy to create this fake drive. And what's really cool about it also is unlike using the substitute command or some other approaches, this fake drive is created before Windows actually loads. So it's during the load process, it creates the drive. And so you don't have to worry that like, did my script to create the fake drive start too late? And I tried to access it for other stuff. So it's, it's a bit complicated to explain, but it, it's a really robust solution for that approach. Um, we have a lot of FFmpeg tools that we're working on getting ready to release. It looks like they were looking at the V1 versions. Um, most of them, the when we release them, they'll be in V2. So these are the V2 versions, but this like MP3 ripper, you would drop in a video and it, it'll, or I think, or, or yeah, or like an audio FLAC file, which is what I did a couple of weeks ago, and it will convert it to MP3 for you um, instantly, really fast, really, really fast. I shouldn't say instant, but it's very fast. Um, pod, pod, podcast to video kind of does the opposite of that. It takes an audio file and then you give it a picture and it will embed that picture in it and create a video, an MP4 file with it, which is really cool if you want to upload that to YouTube. Um, the quick raw edit, we've demonstrated that. That one allows you to very quickly edit some videos and create little chunks if you want to extract pieces of a video and it's lightning fast. It's it's really cool. So all of these, they're going to be you know probably like $5.99 each, something like that. They're not... The, the lower hanging fruit, because we've spent a crazy amount of time on these things, so I'm going to try to recruit a little bit of money, but they're very, very cool. Um, here's the audio transcribe. I did that one a while back where you, you hold down the hotkey and talk, and it submits it to ChatGPT and will transcribe it for you, which is just the beginning part, but the transcriptions are great, and Thomas, a hero member, mentioned that even he does it in German, and it does the German really well. I think it's very good across languages, so that's really cool. Um some examples for our Notify class. Looks like they got updated. That Notify class is a really great way to display information. So that's a cool one there. Uh, remove metadata. If you get videos and they have titles or authors or tags and you don't want them, removing them is kind of a pain. So we have a tool that will just rip all of them out, which is really handy. If you have a lot of videos, it makes it very easy. Um, this is the talk to AI actual script where you, you can hold down the hotkey and talk and it just submits it to ChatGPT to whisper very quick and easy, um, very fast. It doesn't cost a fortune to run. You do need your ChatGPT token, but um, it's and you don't need to have a ChatGPT account, right? Like you don't need to be paying the $20 a month. You just sign up for the API and then use pay as you go. And, it, and it's really inexpensive. Um, looks like more FFmpeg. Oh, no, sorry. We're just using FFmpeg for some of these things. What we do is we use FFmpeg to record your microphone, convert it to, I think, an OGG file, which is a really tiny format, submit that to ChatGPT, and then it converts it into the transcribes it. And then we have another one will actually take that text and convert it to different languages and embed it back into a video. So I don't, I don't know if that's in here somewhere. Um, this AI chat, I can't wait to demonstrate this. I tried it earlier and it was acting weird in this computer. Um, so I'm not going to demo it here, but that's going to be a really cool tool because you can use it on the fly and you don't have to navigate to your AI tool. You can just hit a hotkey, select text, hit a hotkey and bam, it submits it. And then it gives you an interface to show you what it replied back. And you can interact from there if you want to, but it's going to be, a, I think a huge time saver. Um, I don't think we'll be, this is a V1 script that Maestrieth and I wrote years, years, years ago. And uh, it basically appends data, but um, I'm not sure if we'll be, oh, that, yeah, that's the OBS recorder merge. So I'm not sure if we're going to be converting that one because, uh, yeah, I just don't think that we're going to have that. Well, we probably will have an append to easily merge videos, but that'll just be with FFmpeg. So here's our transcribe video. Um, transcribe lots of trans things with the transcribes. These are all really the same project. This file X pro. Uh, so here's the video merger, by the way. So we'll be that one. I think we will have in, in a V2 version. This we, we, as Ace and I recorded a video the other day on this. Uh, and unfortunately I was trying to edit with DaVinci Resolve and my dad's computer was crashing. So I can't edit it down or release it, but it's pretty cool. Cause 
there are like over 1,100 properties that might be available on your file. And it's really cool. We built a nice GUI and it's really a syntax writer as well. So it will write the code you need to use to go get the properties you're looking for. So it's kind of hard to explain, but it'll be a very handy tool if you're trying to find a certain property or check in certain files and see if they have a property. It's going to be great for that. Uh, it's it initially, I think it was called FileX because the FileX Pro is what we borrowed it from, from I think Scan wrote that. And it, um, we really completely changed it. And now I wanted a better name. So it's a file metadata retriever is what we're calling the V2 version. Cause that's what you're doing is re retrieving metadata about the file. All right, text. I guess we made an update now. Isaias, which we'll have to record a separate video on, he learned, discovered how to update um, even our, our window snipping tool. If you're using different DPIs and different monitors, uh, it wasn't taking into account the different DPI and different monitors. And he's figured out how to fix that. So we, we haven't updated our download yet, but we updated our script and it takes that into account. But what we need to also do, I think we'll hold off on releasing the new version of the window snipping tool because I want to also add in that OCR. So our window snipping tool does OCR, but it uses the local Windows 11 and 10, and I think maybe back to 8, OCR engine, a COM object that can do the OCR. However, the, the OpenAI's uh, vision, computer vision, is just far superior, right? So it will have a little cost, but it'll be far more accurate. So I think we'll wait until we update the window snipping tool to include that new OCR approach. Uh, but I'm really excited because it's going to be very cool. Get Active Path. There was a minor tweak to Explorer, and so maybe we made a little change to that, but that's a really, really, I've been using a ton on this computer because he, my dad's on Windows 10, even though it looks a lot like my other computer, it's it's not, you know, it's a Windows 10 slow machine, but that get active path is great because it on almost any program, I can hit control shift C, which I've defined as my hotkey, and it will get the path of that file. And in Windows 10, it's not nearly as an, on easy to do as Windows 11. So that's um, a very cool script. You might want to grab that. Uh, auto control. Now, Isaiah saw a post that said the auto control, um, download the might be start i think it was chrome might block it on the store because it, it violated some of their um what what the, their security issues so hopefully that doesn't go away because this websocket tool darn it sorry not websocket um, auto control tool is a really really cool tool for doing somewhat simple web scraping you can do simple to advanced the problem is um, you can share getting variables out of it. You have to either share it to a file or to your clipboard, which isn't terrible, but you can connect to the DOM and do more robust things compared to with EIA. You really want to do basic stuff. If you're going to do web scraping, auto control allows you to connect to the DOM, do more robust, but you're also submitting JavaScript instead of auto hotkey. So you have to understand that. And also, again, you can't directly talk to auto hotkey. You have to use um, something to connect to it, either the clipboard or a local file. Um, GDI plot, looks like we made some minor changes to our version of GDI plus. Uh, get active path still, newsletter. Um, I guess we made a change to that. This is this is a private, this is, I use this for the newsletter. Um, and Isaiah's had to help me crank that out because my dad didn't have Word on his computer and it made it really a pain, so. As they helped me last week with the newsletter, but um, he ran this and we, we were able to use it. But I think we made a minor tweak. Um, prompt assistant, we're having a weird issue on this computer, on my dad's computer, running prompt assistant. And as they still, it has something to do with the permissions that my dad has on his account for access to the file. And it's very, very weird. Um, we haven't figured out what that was. Let's see, button clock. This is my button clock. I changed the. My dad doesn't have as high resolution, so we changed the resolution size so it um, fits in there better. But uh, that button clock is really cool. I love it so I can hide the clock down here and it takes up far less space. And I can also tweak it to have what I want there. It's a really old, this is a V2 script now, but the V1 version was really old and I forget the author's name, but um, we converted it to V2. Unfortunately, like with Windows 11, not many people can put their taskbar on the right. I do have a video showing you how to do that. Um, so it, it just became moot because down here, it, it doesn't really fit very well. So 
but if you do put your taskbar on the side, it's great having this clock here. And so it's much easier to read. And it still works as a start menu. All right, if I click it, it doesn't change that. So I don't need it to say start. I mean, that's lame. Uh, anyway, where was I here? Button clock. Get bitness. We added to the discovery tool. Let's see here. We added to several tools. The discovery tool. Um, our, let's see if I can actually run this. Yeah, so now when we drag this to a program, notice right here, it tells you the bitness of the program. So um, this in our discovery tool, in our ultimate spy, and in our automator spy, I had the guys add this to say whether the program you're highlighting is 32 or 64 bit. I think all of these are going to be, if I opened the site, maybe it wouldn't be, but um, you get the idea, right? So sometimes it's helpful to know if it's 32 or 64 bit. By the way, this discovery tool and the ultimate spy are two um, of our, you know, best scripts if you don't have them you really should get them because this one the the ultimate i'm oh, sorry where's the ultimate spy also includes the discovery tool it just depends on how deep you want to go right the discovery tool just kind of helps you say here's the approach i can use for automating that program the ultimate spy includes a bunch of tools for inspecting if on those different approaches so if you want to get your feet wet your hands dirty, um, the ultimate spy is great. If you just want to get an idea of how can I automate the tool, the discovery tool is great. Um, in our auditor spy, I much more prefer compared to the built-in window spy because it just organizes things differently, easier to read. Um, and we have a lot of, we have the, you know, is it run as an admin check also, which is in those other tools as well, which is incredibly helpful because it's easy to waste time not realizing the program you're trying to automate isn't run as a, admin mode and that you need to elevate your script all right so ultimate spy detecting encoding um, i was hoping to try to build something to just do a check for encoding but boy it's such a complicated topic i i figured we'll skip that for now like i said we updated our window of our version but this isn't public yet but um it does work now in the different dpis and um, this is another private script which we haven't shared yet so anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you learned something. And thank you. I hope I'll be back in uh, Texas here. Uh, I'm, I'm feel like I'm on the sun. By the way, it's must be like 113 here tomorrow. So that's that's really fun. But um, I should be back in Texas later this week and get back to things as normal. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Cheers.